we doing? Happy Wednesday. Free agency frenzy is official. We're gonna talk all things free agency. Just kidding. Um, actually, we are. I have a really cool guest today. She is in NFL. She's an NFL Network host, reporter. Uh, her name is Taylor Bishani. Uh, but how crazy, right? Like Rogers to New York, you've got Waller going to the Giants, uh, Baker Mayfield to Tampa, all kinds of crazy things. Our, our work, like being a woman in sports broadcasting, it is not easy, but it is fun. And Taylor is great at what she does. And so I'm excited to be able to jump on with her. Hi, girlfriend. How are you? Hi, how are you? Am I in? You're in, girl. Oh, amazing. You're in. Can, okay. you, can you hear me? You're I can. Good? Let me turn you up. Yeah, I've got you. You look nice and cozy over there. It's raining in Cali. So look, this is what happens to my hair. It just doesn't abide by any rules. Well, that, and also I feel like everybody in California is not used to the rain, so they don't know how to drive. I mean, I never know how to drive, but it's different when everybody else doesn't know how to drive either. <laughs> Rain or, or, or not, I, uh, I, I'm probably a very questionable driver, that's true. Um, but thank you so much for jumping on. I know you're so busy, you're so swamped. Um, in fact, you were just in the middle of doing something kind of a big deal uh, in the way of free agency. Um, what was happening? What was just happening right now? I, I feel like free agency is always crazy, but especially this year. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's never a season for the last couple of years where we have not wondered what is Aaron Rodgers doing. Right. He cleared that up for us today. He said he wants to go to the Jets. But Juju just signed with the Patriots. He's a good friend, a former Trojan like you are. Um, so I'm excited to see see how he does there. Yeah. He's coming off the yeah. Super Bowl. So. I know. I know. That'll be – that's – I mean, how did that even, like, happen? You just he, – he was – it was probably a tough decision to make, like you said, coming off of the Super Bowl. Um, he's so talented as a wideout. He always adds depth wherever he goes. He does. Uh, and he's, he's been with the three great teams, right? You know, he's been with the Steelers and he made the tough decision to leave Pittsburgh mm -hmm. um, and go to KC. And then now leaving KC after a Super Bowl ring to go to the Patriots. So like you said, he's a really good, versatile player and he can plug into a lot of different systems. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited to see how that's going to happen and, you know, under Bill Belichick. I know. I wonder how those, movie. how those TikTok videos will come along. I don't know. <laughs> but well, he's so smart. In it. I, I will give him credit for always um, branding himself and having fun with it and knowing that, you know, a football career, just like any career for all of us is short lived, you know, yeah. it has its expiration date. And he's built such a great brand um, outside of football. Yeah. And it doesn't stop it just like building his own brand, but it's also when it comes to giving back and giving to charities, he's the first one always um, supporting so many different organizations. So I love to see that as well. Yeah. And I've spent a little bit of time with Juju and, you know, former Trojan, like you said, he's always been a good guy. You yeah. know, he's always been someone that just seems to care about other people. And not that that's hard, hard, that's hard to come by in the NFL, but you like to see a player, like you said, like brand himself outside the game. It is a short game. It's a tough game. And so to see that he's going to have a career doing whatever he wants. I mean, he's so talented. Um, I love, I love that he's also just a good, a good person. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> Speaking of good people um, and careers, I've known you for many years now. You've been at NFL Network and I, I got to witness your, your complete transformation. You started at NFL Network fairly young. And, you know, when I watch you on camera, there is this gravitas, this groundedness that you deliver. You're always the first one to like break news or share it on Twitter. Your finger is on the pulse when it comes to the game of football. And it really has been so fun to watch you transform because you're such a good person. You're good at your job. And it's not, this is not an easy industry. And I think a lot of people think just because you're, you're, it looks easy on camera. It isn't easy. It's hard. You have, right. You have early call times. You're sometimes you work overnight. Lot, isn't that right? A lot of overnights, especially recently, but I want to give you credit, Aaron. When I first started at NFL network, you were truly my first friend at work and you were currently doing the morning show. So I would be coming in in the morning. You would be leaving. So I only saw you in passing 
but you were the very first person to go out of your way to include me in everything to, I mean, just reach out and try and get to get to know me because I didn't know anybody. Um, I had friends outside of work. Um, some friends that were already living here, but I was brand new to LA and you were the most welcoming, kind, genuine person, friend that I could have ever asked for. And this was while you were talking about being busy, you were incredibly busy doing that morning show. You were, were on the West Coast, obviously. So for any East Coast listeners, you were waking up at what, one o'clock in the morning? You were midnight, probably by midnight. living on fumes yeah. and you could not have been like just more welcome and kind and genuine so thank you yeah you know I appreciate that because in my in my experience when I first started there's so few women when I started in this industry and I had always felt a sense of competition you know like there's this yeah. competitiveness because there's almost like one woman at the a male dominated table in the production meeting and I knew feeling that when I first started, I hated it so much that I didn't want other women to feel that. And so for me, it was like, when I saw you, you know, you were, you were young, you weren't from here, you were in Atlanta. I was like, I, I saw me, I saw someone that I was like, I want to treat her like I would want someone to like foster me and treat me. And, you know, I think times are changing. We're seeing a shift. We were speaking about a woman earlier who we both respect showing up on a podcast being really vulnerable and i i appreciate that because i think when people can understand the challenge of our of our industry when 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 people can is there construction going on yeah i know yes, i'm trying to get it to stop sorry <laughs> sounds like it's it fine um but yeah i think like it starts with letting people know that we love our job. We're super grateful to be here, but it's also okay to say like, it's not always easy. It's, it's, it's tough, especially being a woman in a male dominated industry. You both, you feel both like honored and privileged, but it's not, it's not easy because like, for instance, if I mess up a name and I, I pronounce a name wrong or I get a stat wrong and my male counterpart, my male co-host does the same thing he's kind of forgiven a little 100%. bit easier than like 100%. someone like a I woman, right? I think that there's a little bit of double standard. I think that you almost have to work double mm -hmm. as hard. Mm -hmm. Joy Taylor mm -hmm. said something great the other day. You have to work double as hard to get half the opportunities. And I think that partially that comes with whether, I mean, I've never played a down of football clearly. And even our male counterparts probably haven't played either, yeah. but, mm -hmm. but it's okay that they're talking about it and it's, it's easier to forgive their mistakes than it is for when a woman makes a mistake. So there is a little bit of that, but I will say in the 10 years that I've been doing this, I felt like in the past, in the very beginning, there was so much like pitting against each other for women. And there was mm -hmm. not as much outward support of one another. It felt like every female was competitive with each other. And there was so much competition. Whereas now I feel like it's more normal to be supportive mm -hmm. of one another. It's, it's, great that women are now empowering each other mm -hmm. and i think that a lot of that responsibility falls on us because if we don't support one another then how are you know how are males going to support us and be supportive of us being in the industry so i think that there's been so many incredible women that came before us that paved the way and that allowed us to be in these roles and have these opportunities and now it's on us to take it one step further mm -hmm. and by doing that i think that we just have to support one another and empower one another and view each other not as competition, but a win for one of us is a win for all of us. And I think that you're seeing that a little bit more and more, which is great. And I mean, you're starting it off with your Woman Crush Wednesday, just highlighting how many independent, strong, powerful women they are in their respective fields. So I credit you for that too. Yeah. And I, and I appreciate that. And I love that we both have this mutual respect for Joy Taylor. Yeah. You know, I yeah. hear you you talk so highly about the women in your life that um, that show up for you and they show up for me. And I think like, you're absolutely right. This industry, you know, it, it, it's, it may still be a little competitive, but we're shifting that narrative by just having this contagious energy of like you said, a win for her is a win for us. And, 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 and not to discount, like there's a lot of men that have helped me along the way. Yeah. Male mentors are, are wonderful. And I, I credit you men that have the ability to make space and, and stand behind in solidarity behind women 
and, and help push women forward because we need that. You know, we need that. Like our voice matters. And there's a lot of men out there that are hearing us, making space, prioritizing and wanting women to feel empowered and more comfortable in this industry. But, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's not for a lack of effort, perseverance and challenge. And it's funny because I get this question a lot. And I'm going to ask you, what is it like working in a male dominated industry? For me, it, it is a lot of patience. Like it has had to be a lot of patience in going, not everybody is going to understand. I'm going to get way more criticism for what I say, but also how I look. How you um, look, what your hair looks like, what you're wearing. Um, if you change your hairstyle, God, God forbid, um, <laughs> your earrings, your like yeah. jewelry, it's everything, yes. it's everything except what you're actually saying is usually what people comment on. And I find that it's almost really similar to like social media. If you post something and you read 10 positive, wonderful, sweet, kind comments, those don't necessarily stick with you, but it's the one mean one that really sticks with you. Mm -hmm. And I think that mm -hmm. that's kind of holds true for our line of work as well. You know, you can feel like you did a good job. You can read 10 great wonderful co supportive comments and then you read the one that's mean well that's the one that unfortunately that tends to stick with you more often mm -hmm. so if you know i i get questioned by young women all the time for advice and like what does it take to make it in our industry what what, what is your like number one thing that you say to young women who want to get into our industry like what do you say it takes it takes resilience it takes getting a lot of no's. But mm -hmm. I think that my piece of advice is always, you know, expect that you're going to get a lot of no's and don't let that discourage you because it only takes one yes in order for you to fulfill and live out your dreams. Yeah. And you're going to get way more rejection than you are acceptance. But that doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. You just have to learn to rather than let it discourage you, make mm -hmm. it make you stronger. Mm -hmm. And I do feel like we live in a different world even than 10 years ago with social media. You no longer mm -hmm. need a major network or a major platform. You know, you can start doing things on your own because mm -hmm. of TikTok, because of Instagram, mm -hmm. which by the way, I'm terrible at TikTok. So don't, don't ask me for TikTok advice, but, yeah. <laughs> but because of the different social media platforms where you can really build your own brand and connect with people just the way that you and I are right now, we're not on mm -hmm. a network, you know, we're not on a major platform we're on our own pages and so I think that that is an advantage and I think it's one of the great things of social media yeah it's the way that it allows you to you know have have your own channel have your own opinion have your own whatever field you're wanting to go into well it's opened up a world of opportunities in that regard yeah have your own voice yeah. you know like I think you're right it's it's we we don't need a network to employ us anymore we can we can carve out our own brand our own social, you know, I, I, I think Pat McAfee does a great yes, job a great example. of like, like, he is the one kind of pulling the strings. It's no longer him needing a network to employ him. He's created this brand of like, what you see is what you're going to get consistently from Pat McAfee. Yeah. And, yeah. you know, you got to love it. You're going to sign up because he's great. But if you if you look at like, that's a perfect example. It's like, those are the types of people, personalities that you're drawn to. Mm -hmm. I don't, th long gone are the days where people want to see somebody sitting at a news desk, you know, reading the news without an opinion mm -hmm. and without providing some context that's where you feel like you're actually in a conversation with the person rather than them reading yeah. from a script. I don't want to, I don't want to get the news that way, or I don't want right. to be talking, especially in sports. Like you want to have fun with it. This is an outlet. This is like a hobby, a passion. And another perfect example of this is Tinks. Do you follow It's Me Tinks? She's a mm. fantastic follow if you don't. She is so funny. She's relatable. And she was in, I think she was a editor at a magazine or maybe a writer at a magazine. And during COVID, she was like, screw it. I'm going to start my own page. I'm going to, she's blown up. She's huge. She is the best. She's like kind of like an older sister for women. And she gives great advice and she's become this like phenomenon and networks are now hiring her for events or whatnot. She's not going to go to a network to do news or do comedy or whatever, whatever, like she's in such a big space. She does a lot. So I think that that you're seeing more and more of that and you're seeing more and more of Pat McAfee where you're not so locked into this one little space. They allow you to be everything that you want to be 
have normal conversations, not have it as scripted because that's, I mean, people want somebody that is relatable. Mm -hmm. We're all human. We're not robots. Authentic. Yeah. Yeah. Authentic. You want someone that you can, like you said, relate to. And I think um, that's really, really, really good advice. Because the talking head, right? Like the days of the anchor just reading from a script. Guess what, guys? That person is highly replaceable mm -hmm. with another cheaper alternative that just came out of journalism school. Right. So I'm not advising for you to, you know, this isn't a conversation about branding, but I think that's really great advice for the young students of broadcast because broadcast is shifting. It is, it, People like they, they want context. They know what they're going to get when they get a report from Taylor or they're going to get a, you know, a story from Pat McAfee or just something. Um, I agree with you in service of perspective. And um, it's really interesting that broadcast is really shifting in that way because, you know, when I was in school, it was, it was the opposite. It was almost like, get out of the story, get out of the way. Don't, don't insert yourself. And I feel like it's completely shifted now where I want Taylor, I want her perspective on it now more than I want just the, the news or the facts. I can do that on, on the internet and Google a story. Why I'm tuning into you or a certain broadcaster is based on the feeling I get when I watch it, which like yeah. you said, it's a and deliver it in a fun, a unique way. Nobody has time to yeah. sit there and watch, you know, two hour long shows anymore. Like, I don't know. I mean, if you do all the power to you, but yeah. find fun, engaging, quick ways to deliver your content. If that is what you're in, even if you're, you know, in any field, social media has made it so much easier to do marketing for a store for jewelry mm -hmm. for mm -hmm. it just opened up mm -hmm. so many different opportunities and doors. And we often highlight the negatives that come with, this but there's a ton of positives yeah well and i think um i think that's that's great advice for kids or you know young young people who want to get reps and they don't have a network or an organization it's just that's what i tell young women all the time just start a youtube page or just like do yeah. it on social instagram whatever like create reps and you know show off your personality and just be able, if you want to do broadcast, talk about the thing you're passionate yeah. about. I also say, get ready for criticism <laughs> because we're, we hear it all the time, you know, one way or the other. Our, our work is so subjective. One producer will love us and another one will like completely, you know, dismantle us or, or just that we're, not their, that we're not their flavor. And I think the other advice that I give young people is harness who you you are and and really show up unapologetically because like guess what I'm not for everybody I'm right. not for everybody and the work for me even not even in my career is in general is in life it's like not everybody is gonna love me and guess what like I have to be okay with that I mean at the end of the day I gotta love what I look you know the the person in the mirror so putting my my eggs in in someone else's basket like they're gonna offer me a boost in self-esteem, I think is a, is a ticket to a disaster situation right. because, um, it's just to be happy it's with highly first. criticized. I mean, I feel like yeah. that's the advice of whenever you're like thinking about, you know, diving into a new relationship, it's like, don't look to the relationship in order to fulfill what's missing inside of you. You've got to fill that basket first with yourself and mm -hmm. work on your own self before you can then go into a relationship. So, I mean, I think that that holds true through relationships, through work, through, through everything. Yeah. Yeah. Well, listen, I, I know you're busy. Um, I, I mean, we covered everything I wanted to talk about. Uh, I just, I'm always so inspired and impressed with who you are as a person. Um, you work really hard. Um, I trust your, your journalism but I also just trust you as a person. I love when I'm around you. We well, have I feel so much fun. Same way. And, and Aaron and we, I had a, um, a fun slumber party over the Super Bowl this mm -hmm. year. And whenever we go out together, we always find a good time. <laughs> we sure do. We, it is mayhem indeed. But you know what? You're my um, sweet tooth sister. Uh, you and I have an affinity for ice cream. Or Jack anything. in the box at 4 a.m. Sure. Those milkshakes were delicious. <laughs> 
in desperate times, in desperate times. But no, Erin, I truly feel the exact same way about you. It speaks volumes when I was absolutely a nobody and it's so much easier to just pass by me and not say anything when I'm just this new girl that, like you said, in previous times or even, I mean, even still in today's climate, there's always some part of, there's like competition amongst one another. Cause it's like, well, who's this new girl coming in? And you never had that. You were always truly so kind and it was authentic and genuine and you didn't even know me and you brought me a birthday present. I'd only been there for a couple of weeks, like months. And you went out of your way to be such a major support system for me. And that speaks volumes because I was truly just this new girl. You were born and raised in California. You have so many friends here. You didn't need another friend. You did it because you have such an amazing heart and are so kind. So I feel the exact same way about you, truly. I love you, Taylor. You are so incredible. Uh, you're generous with your time. I, I love getting to learn a little bit about a day in the life. And I know you have to get back. It is free agency <laughs> frenzy. It the is frenzy wilder is than real. ever. The frenzy is real. Juju to the Patriots. That's awesome. Thank you for uh, for breaking a little news here. But um, get back to it. I'll see you soon. Drinks at Jelena. And um, mwah, I love you. I love you. Have a good rest of your day. Bye, everybody. Bye. Thank you for listening.